Watson, I have told you several times now, I am not to be disturbed. But Holmes, you have been locked inside your cabin for all of four days now. Outside, the sun is simply radiant, and the wind from the sea... If you approach me, Watson, I will throw you out. Now leave me. Blast it all, Holmes. I am bored. I can't take these sailors' conversations for another minute. We have an understanding, Watson, each to his purpose. I will look to the translation of the book. You are to study the figures written out by our young friend Davy. Now, get on with your task and leave me to mine. But you know that these enigmas are not my strong point. Or wouldn't you have some other task which is better suited to my skills, Holmes? Hmm, of course. You're a man of letters, after all. So, return to the bridge, take your trusted notebook, and apply your mind to editing this small writing. Agreed. On what subject? It is my monograph on the calculated trajectories of gull excretia. Good day, Watson. I see we have received a message, undoubtedly from my brother Mycroft. Strange. Here, read this, Watson. Indeed. But the possession of such a treasure is an end in itself. Why the devil go through with such an elaborate masquerade? Money is often the motive of the basest acts, but not in this case. These are deep waters indeed, Watson. These people follow some other dark purpose, so desperate that it justifies any sacrifice and great risk. You frighten me, Holmes. I know. Sometimes I frighten myself. Enough of idle speculations, Watson. I asked you to study the figures drawn by young Davy. No doubt they are some cipher. What do you make of them? Indeed, they are open to but one possible meaning. 
even if it eludes me at present. As for my own enigma, I have failed to penetrate the secrets of this book. The language is archaic, and my own modest knowledge of ciphers is sorely tested. I have succeeded in drawing forth only insanities and other absurdities. According to this book, if my translation is exact, if one makes this mark with human blood, and then with conviction recites this illuminating verse, the victim is mesmerized or demon to leave his mind. I tell you, Watson, this reads like complete gibberish. I do not know what to make of it. How did you say it? Gnurth could do a... What? Oh, these drawings, what a horror. I tell you, Holmes, this book gives me great unease, as does almost everything to do with this affair. I just recalled, Watson. Didn't Barnes, the bookseller, tell us he had studied ancient history? Perhaps he might help us with the translation of this book. We must seek out better minds, for we are at a standstill. I have not the slightest idea where they could have taken these people and what consequences await them. Let's take our leave and see if Barnes might be of assistance. Mr. Holmes, Dr. Watson, a real pleasure to see you. I say, where have you been? You've stayed away for some months now. Indeed, we took a very long journey and barely made it back. However, we have more important matters to discuss. Didn't you say you have some knowledge of ancient people, their language, writings and customs? Indeed I did, Mr. Holmes. Why do you ask? You are just the man we need. I ran across this esoteric text during our travels and wondered if... Is there something wrong, Barnes? Mr. Holmes, wherever did you find this? This book, it is worthy of a museum. If you could be so good as to translate some of these fragments for me, I would be in your debt. I am particularly interested in these pages here. They are in the poorest condition and therefore appear to be the most used. With pleasure, I will get to work straight away and keep you informed of my progress. Strand! Get the strand! Three ships still missing at sea! All aboard feared lost! Get the strand! Latest word on the missing ships! Give me the latest edition, there's a good lad. Thank you, mister. Watson, consider the news of all these missing ships. I have an idea, but it will be necessary to secure a chart for the Scotland coast and nearby seas. No point in asking Barnes. I have no desire to divert his attention from the translation. True enough, Holmes. But where else would we find such a chart? It's elementary. It is a sea chart we seek. We must go to the harbour. Good day, sir. Good morning to you, gentlemen. Would you care for a pint, or perhaps something finer? Thank you, but at the moment I have need of information, and will have to miss another glass of your fine ale. More's the pity. Would you happen to know where I could find charts of the local waters? They are all kept at the harbour master's office, but I am afraid only those with port business are allowed to enter. I trust you understand. Precisely. What I need is a chart of the Scottish area, where all those ships have wrecked recently. Indeed. Such a sad tale. All those poor souls lost at sea. It seems as if the very devil is at work there. Hang on. 
a chart of the Scotland coastline, you said. It seems to me I have one in my room over there, behind the bar. Here's the key. Take it and have a look for yourself. If you find it, it's yours for the taking. A photograph of Rochester as a young man. I have what we need, Watson. Now, let's examine this map. Watson, that's what those mysterious figures meant. Longitude and latitude. They indicate a point along the Scottish coast called Ardnamurkham. Let's bring back the key to the tavern keeper and see if he knows this place. Did you find everything to your liking? Indeed, you are as good as your word. I found the charts just as you said. Does the name Ardnamurkham mean anything to you? Ah, yes. It's a lighthouse along that very coastline. Legend has it, the place was built over a pirate's hideaway. In fact, now that I think on it, that spot is right in the middle of the tempest that is taking down all those ships. Rather odd-looking building. They say the chap who built it, Stevenson I believe his name was, that he fancied up the entrance with foreign symbols, Egyptian obelisks and, and even a dog with wings. Strange fixings for a lighthouse, isn't it? Mr. Holmes, I was able to translate the pages that you wanted. Come, I will show you. This book is quite ancient. It tells of a terrifying sect devoted to strange entities. The descriptions are vague, but we can presume the origin of this myth arises from the destructive Leviathan represented in the Bible, a creature said to sleep and dream in a strange city under the sea. A nightmare sleeping within the sea. To be exact, the pages you asked me to translate are in fact a prayer or invocation to this entity and the description of the ceremony associated with it. To be frank, what is described in this book would make one laugh, were it not for its reliance on such horribly obscene, morbid and bloodthirsty language. And this ceremony, what can you tell me about it? Promise me, you will not laugh. The book says that hundreds or thousands of years ago, during a particular alignment of the stars, a priest performed these rites, invoking the name of a destructive leviathan. The priest intoned his name and called for his return to this earth so his followers could give him his due. The priest then asked a representative of each nation on the earth to recite the invocation and sacrifice themselves to the sea from atop a colossal natural rock tower surrounded by water. All this is quite absurd, isn't it? Pray continue, Barnes. As you like. It goes on to say that the ceremony must be held under the image of the messenger of the outside gods. Nothing more exact is said on these entities. However, from their description, their messenger would have a form rather close to the Egyptian Sphinx, except that his face is without feature and jet black in colour. So an idol in its likeness must be present during the ceremony. But can you imagine that? 
some so-called priest and an international crowd atop a tower singing in unison before some faceless winged stone lion? I can imagine it very well, Barnes. You say that these people are to throw themselves into the sea so that their god will have his due. But what is it about? What does this god seek? That's the most preposterous part of this tale, and proves it to be pure myth and fancy. Even for the sake of argument, this ceremony could never have happened. In such ancient times, it would have been quite impossible to gather representatives from every nation on Earth and in one place. I understand, Barnes. Humor me a bit more and please answer my last question. What would this Leviathan want from us? Indeed, we would owe this creature our world. According to this, complete the ceremony and the collective sacrifice, invoke the demon, and he will arise and swallow the earth. <laughs> yes, Holmes, they sought nothing less than the end of the world. <laughs> what nonsense! <laughs> Thank you, Barnes. I must leave now. Goodbye. The newspaper dating before our departure. Watson, find it. There was some article about the current alignment of the stars. This may tell us precisely how much time we have left. But Holmes, surely you can't believe... The newspaper, Watson. Find that newspaper.